Hello, I'm Terry Cron with Heavy Duty Powertrain. I'm the owner of Heavy Duty and uh, we work out of Davidson, Michigan. And uh, on that note, I am no way affiliated with Cummins Motor Company. I do not work for them. I'm not a representative and we are not a Cummins distributor. If you need to find that, uh, a distributor, or you will need to go to the internet and go to Cummins.com and you can find your local distributor. I uh, specialize in rebuilding of their ECMs, uh, dealing with the L10, M11, and N14 engines. On that note, these ECMs are rebuilt, refurbished. <clears throat> and they are completely taken apart and sandblasted and new screws and bushings and um, any chips, chip sets that need to be replaced. Uh, we, uh, we specialize in that. And uh, if you're looking for an ECM, then, you know, you may want to compare our price. Uh... Getting to it, February 2009, tip of the month. It seems very, very logical now that these trucks now with the select and select plus engines have been out there since the low 90s, 91, 92 to uh, about 2005 on that particular models. And over that period, uh, I have found uh, that Cummins has made a lot of improvements in the wiring naturally over 15 years. The engine wiring harnesses I'm talking about. So my big uh, tip of the month here is, hey, your truck, if it's over 10 years old, it's time to get new wiring harnesses on there. Kind of comparable to like a spark plug spark plug wire set back in the older days uh, so most of the time the harnesses run the injector and sensor harness is uh, somewhere around the $700 range for both of them together I know the N14 harness we uh, sell for uh, 700 and 700, 750, something like that. I think the price just went up, but excellent harness. You know, the best grade wiring to date now in the 2000s and uh, additional grounds, which is a really big issue with the Select Pluses, I feel. Um, and on that note, um, you need the you know, when we talk about the injector harness, we're talking about the high power stuff, the 12 volt stuff. And if that shorts out, you know, that ECM is going to get fried, I can tell you. I've taken apart many of them and you know it's fried because uh, in, in our terminology, if your core is burnt that you send into us, you know, it's um, not a good core. And some of the sure tail signs is on a burnt core is you shake it and it rattles like because things are burnt up in there. The other thing is if that's really burnt, you'll smell it. It's burnt up. It's an electronic. So that's the how we decide if the core is good or not. If it's burnt up, then it's no good. Uh, as far as Cummins goes, you'll have to talk to them or a distributor closest to you of how they evaluate course. But, you know, our system does not compare to their system. we got to have a good core. We can't keep our business going here rebuilding them. So that's your tip of the month. You know, I would, if I had a fleet of selects, the high fail items are the engine positioning sensor, which leaks out the back, it's a sure tail sign that it's bad. The fuel solenoids will get sluggish, and if they get too slow, they'll send a spike back in and burn up the circuit that controls that. It will not make a, a bad core, 
but it will take out that circuit and naturally you're going to have to get a rebuilt ECM for it to perform right. And on that note, uh, a lot of people will uh, hook up a 12 volt wire to the field solenoid and uh, see if that will resolve it or start it. And if you're going to do that, that's okay. Um, but make sure you take the wire that's on that coming from the ECM off or that will back feed in there and it will do more and more damage. And usually 90% of the time that's not going to get you out of trouble because if you're not getting voltage to the fuel solenoid, you're probably not getting a signal to fire the injector. So the ECM's got more problems than that. Uh, one tip on N14s is simply to get a GM noid light with two prongs and uh, right there at the block to see if that ECM's doing what it's supposed to do. You just plug that noid light in on the on one of the injector wires and, and see if it's uh, doing what it's supposed to, lighten up the light. If it isn't, then you got to go back to seeing if you got the proper voltage. Uh, usually the ECM and the firewall in between there, there's two uh, 10 to 15 amp fuses. You need to check the voltage there and you want, you want to check the cranking voltage. Uh, I believe that the specs on it out of Cummins is if it drops below 6.2 volts, it won't fire up the ECM or communicate. So uh, if you've got good voltage and ground going in and you haven't got a signal to fire the injectors or uh, voltage going to the fuel solenoid, then the ECM's bad. But again, tip of the month, it's time to put a little money in at least the engine harnesses. And uh, it'll, it'll pay for itself down the road. And um, if you got any other questions, give me a ring. 810-653-6300. I'm Terry Crown. Thank you.